Greetings all, Ferrari Man 601 here. Welcome to Mugello, and welcome aboard the Ferrari 643. Quite unexpectedly, ASR have decided to update their Ferrari 643 from 0.1 beta to 0.5 beta. This coming out uh, at at most in the last day or so. I saw it about an hour ago, and then decided to do this. But the Ferrari 643 from the 1991 season piloted by Alain Prost, John Alesi, and Gianni Morbidelli. Ferrari took a little bit longer with the gestation of this car. They introduced it about halfway through the season at the French Grand Prix. Again, they were trying to go after Williams and McLaren, who were duking it out for the driver's and constructor's title that year. This car came up quite short on that task. Out of ten races, it won none of them, scored pole position for none of them, and scored fastest lap in none of them. So off the mark a bit from Ferrari. However, ASR very much on the mark. As with the FW14 review I did a couple of days ago, give you some beauty shots of the exterior. Very crisp, very sharp, very precise. Great models, great textures, great livery. Awesome. Absolutely fantastic. Again, this car is in beta. Unbelievable. Quad exhaust from the V12 there, which you can catch a fleeting glimpse at from underneath the bodywork. <laughs> Ferrari can't even resist the urge to put their logo right on the end of the gearbox, where hopefully uh, nobody will see it. Great detail there on the floor and the under tray, the fuser shooting up toward the heavens, and all the little NACA ducts on the engine cover. Nicely done. Very nicely done. Little rivets there on the monocoque. Brake discs, which rotate within the calipers. That wheel nut is sharp. The adjuster holes on the wing end plate there. And even at close range, these textures still look pretty sharp. So very nicely done to ASR. Given that this is 0.5, I guess we can reasonably say that this car is about halfway complete, but it is a very complete package right now, as far as I'm concerned. Back in the cockpit now, you can see the dashboard there with our uh, lap time ticking away. Our speed readout, it's labeled in metric, but uh, we will be running in old money Imperial units have our gear indicator, and uh, we will have attack and shift light once we get the engine started. Cockpit detailing very nice, positioning looks good, scaling looks good, there are no little graphical glitches that I can detect anyway. Chassis plate and the FIA sticker on the uh, left hand side of the bulkhead, and brake bias adjuster on the right. Nicely detailed on the steering wheel, as spartan as it may be. Left side of the dash, you got the button for reverse and uh, some of your ignition switches. On the right there, that looks like your uh, emergency clutch for the marshals. And if you just look on the top of the bulkhead, just beyond the steering wheel below the windscreen, you can see what I believe are the two struts for the front suspension. Very nice touch indeed. So we'll get the engine started and we'll go out on the track. We have got 36 liters of fuel on board. And we've got the soft tires fitted. So, clutch in, first gear, and we'll pull away. Watch the dashboard as we accelerate. It's got two modes, one for low revs and one for high. So when the uh, revs come up, it should switch over into the high rev mode. And there it is. This first lap is just going to be an install, get everything up to temperature, and then we'll start going for it a bit. Point one version of this car was also very highly polished. Not quite up to the level of the FW14, but not too far off of it either. We've got auto cut on the upshift and auto flip on the downshift. It's rather a 
aggressive warm-up lap, but the car's already there. A bit of understeer because the tires are cold. And also a bit of understeer because uh, point one version of this car, in terms of chassis dynamics, it had a lot of understeer in it. Not sure if ASR built that into the default setup for accessibility reasons, or if that's more so in the general characteristics of this car, given its competition history. But uh, that should stamp itself out once we get the tires up to a more reasonable temperature. So, flat and seventh on the main straight, 190 miles an hour, and still accelerating pretty decently. And hard on the brakes into turn one. Bit of a bobble there. Tires are still a bit cold. The car feels quite positive. It's very stable. No snap oversteer in this thing. We're just getting the tires through their last phase of the warm up now. person would have done a couple benchmark laps in, say, I don't know, the FW14, just to compare the relative pace of these two cars. I haven't done that, because I'm not intelligent enough, apparently. So, I don't really know how fast this is relative to its peers, but so far it feels pretty nice. A little bit of a confidence lift coming into that corner, and now this one, my favorite complex on the circuit the hill, put the curb, and then go as wide as you want on the exit. Beautiful. Car is always understeer through here. It's off camber, but you got a lot of exit curve to help you out. Same place here. Lots of understeer. It's very much like uh, Rivage at Spa, where it's off camber and the car loves to understeer. Consistency. And as the tires come up to temperature, I'm feeling uh, that understeer start to dial itself out for the most part. Still a little bit mid corner. and we've got our tires up to temperature. We can give a more realistic view of the chassis dynamics. Overall, neutral, which is very favorable. A little bit of understeer big corner, but nothing too spectacular, nothing you can't get yourself out of. Braking is 
is very nice. And the gearbox is super sharp. Unlike on the FW14, where I uh, gently criticized some of the uh, upshift sounds, in this one we've got a much more audible throttle cut, which uh, seems appropriate. Accompanied with a little clunk from the gearbox for good measure. And the downshifts are fine sound wise. Also, in terms of gearbox dynamics, the upshifts uh, don't unsettle the car too much, and downshifts, same sort of deal. You've got a good auto blip on the downshift, which uh, seems to do the rev matching quite nicely indeed. Downshift in the middle of the corner. The car did not care in the least. Four. Can we do a 25 flat? Push it a little deeper into turn one. Understeer, big time, mid corner. Some of that's probably me, some of that's probably the tires having lost the newness. rated at 715 horsepower from the vehicle description, and it feels like it. But power delivery is smooth, if not linear. Uh, has a little bit, and I mean this relatively speaking, a little bit of a dead zone as you're transitioning up into the higher revs. There's a lot of power mid-range, and then it sort of comes back to you to an extent uh, at the top end of the revs, but not as much as it is mid-range. So car making most of its power in the uh, higher mid-ranges. Very nice circuit. It's not terribly technical, but it is a very nice track to drive. Oh, 
lap has a very nice flow to it from one corner to another. One of the few circuits where it really feels like you're going somewhere. It's uh, just very, very nice all around. Most of the corners are pretty wide to give you the availability of multiple lines. And most of the corners are on camber as well. So if you get into some trouble in the braking zone, you can gather it back up without too much drama. Ferrari do, of course, own this circuit, and they host private events there all the time. Look at that, straight on the throttle in fourth gear out of the corner. No wheel spin, no drama. Sixth gear seems to be the order of the day for this one. That's a bit wide. Which that royally screws me in entrance to here. That's the other thing about Mugello. These corners are all very much interconnected in that your exit of one affects your entrance to another and vice versa. There's not too much downtime in between corners to reposition the car down a straight. we've got going on here, the brake discs glow. Watch the inside of the front wheels now. Seems to be a pretty standard detail on most cars in a Cito Corsa now. And those fronts are starting to cry enough. with the FW14, very hard to believe that this is still in beta. chassis is pretty neutral. Now with the front start to go off, we're back to understeer. Initial turn in is fine, with a little bit of trail braking again for good measure, but then you start to transition from braking to power, you're met with an invisible wall that pushes you ever wider. sounds here as we're cruising in the pit lane. First gear. And back toward the box. So, 
So, very, very nice from ASR, the .5 beta of the Ferrari 643 from 1991. Still anxiously awaiting the MP46 McLaren, considering this project uh, was put out. Maybe, just maybe, we'll see that one very shortly. I certainly hope so, because I can't wait to get my hands on that. But until then, Ferrari Man 601 saying thank you very much for watching, and see you soon.